Hi, I'm Ed Parker. Often called the father of American karate, sometimes called the godfather of American karate. However, I did not start martial arts here in the United States. There are members of the Tong, imported Chinese coolies who had come here to work on the railroads in the early 1840s. They formed syndicates, Tongs, and they used to be in war with each other, and as a result, they started to bring in martial art masters. Of course, after the Tong Wars had subsided, many of these uh, masters had gone back to China, but a few of them remained here, so as a result, they had these private classes. I was the first to start this art on a commercial endeavor in around 1954. Because of the philosophy that's occurring on the streets today, which is, it's not always right, what was left that counts. Karate is becoming a very interesting and uh, sought after martial art experience. Number one, to learn how to fight. However, fighting is not a big thing in terms of our training. We try to teach, especially the children, our students, into learning how to fight so that fighting does not become an important thing in their life. This is Larry Tatum, fifth degree black belt. trying to make killers out of these children. We're trying to teach them confidence. Confidence that will help them in all facets of life. That is what the system of Kempo involves. And that's the history of Kempo. Now I say system because Kempo is just that. It's a system. And from this system, we teach individual styles. We're sort of like tailors who try to fit the art to suit the individual rather than the reverse. What makes us unique? We're practical. We're not classical. We teach how to combat things that occur on today's street. We teach linear as well as circular movements. Movements that will be helpful and practical, not against one individual, but several individuals as well. And that is the essence of Kempo. Complete motion, complete movements, all concepts involved to cope with the fighting found on our streets today. In training as a sport, the practice of karate is accompanied by a ritual of centuries-old formalities that precede lessons, demonstrations, and practice sessions. This symbolizes the respect with which our kids regard each other and themselves. During our training and demonstrations, we wear the traditional Japanese uniform, the gi. It's not only a comfortable and sensible workout suit, but it is also worn out of respect to the oriental culture that developed the martial arts into an organized form of fighting. We maintain a respect for our eastern roots, but we don't serve them. The Kempo system of karate practiced in the United States has been adapted to the American way of learning and moving, a westernized martial arts form to fit the unique needs of our contemporary society. Karate teaches how to down an opponent through skilled coordination and manipulation of feet, knees, and elbows. Training in how to fall and to avoid injury during practice or actual combat is an essential part of the study. The additional rewards of body conditioning and helpful exercises are obvious. Through centuries of oriental and more recently occidental development and refinement, physical blows, punches, and kicks have become an art form. One of the prime objectives of this art is the establishment of spiritual attitudes that lead to humility and self-restraint. It is not intended to be used aggressively or misused for selfish or cruel purposes. To do so, the martial artist would dishonor himself and his or her art. Once, 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 once. 
In dealing with children, I think the first thing that you have to start with is to get to know the child as an individual. Then you can adjust your teaching to the child. And that's what's so important about Kempo Karate, is that it's designed to fit the individual, while at the same time it's giving him discipline and giving him confidence. It's also adjusting to his way of moving, his way of thinking. Uh, without knowing a lot about the individual, he's just another person on the mats following what the teacher says. I don't want them just to follow, I want them to ask questions. I want them to uh, say, yeah, but what if this didn't work and what if this worked? I don't want robots out there. This is what inspired my idea to teach the children the way that I teach them. I want each child to know that when he's on those mats, he's in competition with himself, not with somebody else. If a child thinks he's out there in competition with others, then there's no difference between this than any other organized sport. But here at the school, there is a difference. In my classes, the students range in age from three and a half to 14 years. I feel it's essential to mix the ages. The older kids learn by assisting the youngsters, and being with these older, more accomplished students gives the little ones something to strive for. This doesn't mean that every three-year-old can start studying karate, but at that age, most do have enough attention span to begin lessons. I start some children at five minutes. When the parent brings them back, we add another minute or two. As the lessons progress, we add even more time. Before too long, we're up to 15 and then 20 minutes, always increasing that attention span. Finally, we've worked up to a half hour and then to the full hour of class time. got Benjamin, Jackie, and Brian fighting two-on-one. The individual practice is important, but these simulated combat exercises are essential in developing timing, coordination, and self-confidence. Right now, these youngsters are experiencing the closest thing there is to an actual street situation. At this point, their training becomes realistic. It's probably the first time they've felt this type of physical and mental pressure. Naturally, I stay right with the kids to avoid any situations where a serious injury might arise. Same fight, you guys are going after me. Yeah, you can come on. Come on. 